Assalamu alaikum everyone and this is a demonstration of the confrontation visual field skill. Well, the demonstration will follow in a bit. So just like always, we are going to be defining visual fields and conf confrontation visual field testing. Visual field, as you already know by now, is an island of vision uh, in a sea of darkness. And confrontation visual field is a method of measuring your visual field, which is also called perimetry, by comparing the visual field of the examiner to that of the subject, uh, which can also be uh, your patient. Um, and, and this, although is a very crude method, just like digital tonometry, it can be useful to pick up gross defects, large defects, something that you will get if you have a retinal detachment, vascular occlusion, or late stage glaucoma. It is qualitative in the sense that you're picking up uh, can the patient see or not see and not very uh, useful in modern uh, diagnostics uh, regarding visual field analysis. But again, just like digital tonometry, when you have nothing, this can be your best friend, uh, especially when we talk about larger defects and, and later stages of glaucoma defects. So again, just to remind you that visual acuity was a function of your fovea and was testing uh, the ability of your fovea to recognize or resolve your object of interest and we measured it using Snell's visual acuity whereas visual field is everything around that center and that is measured using visual field testing and the way we examined it was when you're facing your object of interest it is very clear to you because your fovea is able to resolve in great detail uh, again we have done that before and I'm sure you know by now whereas the rest of the retina can recognize, it can't resolve, and we test it by visual field testing of which one of the methods is confrontation. So what is a confrontation visual field? It's basically uh, comparing your hill of vision to that of your patient's hill of vision, or your visual field to your patient's visual field. And if you have defects yourself, you cannot accurately test your patient's visual field so that is a thing to sort of remember. So if you do have a visual field defect that you're aware of, you tell your uh, OSCE station faculty member uh, that, hey, I have a visual field defect, so my findings will, might not be accurate. So this is something that you should be aware of uh, when you're visual field testing because it's confrontational, it's comparative. So what do you need for it? Basically, you need two chairs that can move up and down independently because you need to be at eye level and at a specific distance from your patient. And this is, again, something that I've taken directly from your clerkship manual, familiarity breeds ease of learning, not contempt. Anyways, so when we are testing visual fields, we need to be at eye level of our patient and when we are, we obviously are going to uh, test one quadrant at a time. So let's just see, we test the temporal quadrant of the right eye. So the patient's left eye and uh, your left eye should be covered. Uh, is, I've said here, so this part is right now hidden. This diagram is just to show you how far your hands are going to be, which is 30 degrees off the midline at uh, the eye level of, of your level being the eye level and your hand is going to be in the quadrant that you are testing so when you're testing the horizontal quadrants the temporal and nasal temporal being the outside nasal being the inside quadrant and let's just start off with the right eye so the patient has covered the left eye you have covered your right eye so that the corresponding eyes are open you're testing your patient's right eye against your left eye we're testing the temporal quadrant so you bring your hand out 30 degrees from the midline, this is the midline, and the temporal quadrant, and you are going to hold up fingers one, two, or five in the perpendicular plane, like this, not like this. If you hold up like this, how is the patient going to see the number of fingers? You hold it like this, perpendicular, this, not this. So it's really important that you're holding the fingers appropriately and perpendicularly, and if the patient, and you, you do it twice, you hold one, two, or five, and you do it twice just to be sure, and if the patient counts all the fingers correctly, both of the times, then you can write okay, and proceed on to test the nasal quadrant. Again, you uh, have your appropriate eye covered, and you take your hand 30 degrees from the midline into the nasal side, and you're sitting a meter away from your patient, making sure that the eyes are in contact with one another because if the patient is moving his eyes, he can obviously see your hand and you're not testing visual field. So he's staring at your eye, he's not moving his eye, and now we are testing the nasal quadrant and the pa pa patient can count the number of fingers you're holding up perpendicularly 
one, two, or five, do it twice. And if he counts correctly, all of the fingers, both of the time you say, okay. So your temporal, horizontal testing is done, temporal and nasal quadrant. Uh, one of the things that I find is when the patient, is, when the student is doing it in a station, he's doing it really well and he can figure out at least from the look of his face that, yeah, this is something that uh, the patient can't or can't see, but they forgot, but they forget by the time they have to draw it. So one very good idea is that you draw these figures before you start, just like I told you when we were doing extraocular movements, that you draw those, though, that triple limbed H before you start the, the testing actually, so that at least the diagram is there. And one very good idea is that as long, you have your diagram in front of you and all you need to do is write okay or put a check mark, writing okay is the way we t tell you. Uh, so. Once you have done these horizontal quadrants, just come quickly, right? Okay, if you are the sort of a person who would totally forget uh, a mental note. So once you have done that, we move on to the vertical quadrants, superior and inferior. And this time again, your appropriate eyes are closed, and you are at eye, uh, your eye is at the eye level of the uh, the the patient, and he is looking into your eye or she is looking into your eye. You extend your arms in in thirty degrees from the midline, superiorly, inferiorly. Uh, midway between yourself and the patient, you're about a meter away from the patient. And again, you're showing him one, two, or five fingers. One, two, five. Do it twice. And if he says, oh, uh, we test the superior quadrant first, and if we can count them, all the fingers correctly, both of the times you write okay, then we move on to inferior uh, field testing. And again, the patient is looking into your eye 30 degrees from the midline in the inferior quadrant, one, two, five. You don't have to go one, two, five. You can go five, two, one, whatever comes to your mind. Just make sure that you know how many fingers you're holding up. You're holding up five, thinking you're holding up one, and the patient is going one, you're saying, no, he is not wrong. So make sure you know how many fingers you're holding up. And if he can count all of the fingers correctly, both of the times you write, okay, and then your right eye testing is complete, then you will proceed to uh, do the left eye and you do it the very same way, temporal quadrant first, move on to the nasal quadrant, make mental notes or just write it, do superior quadrant, do inferior quadrant and then you just write them down. So. Um, this is how you record your normal findings. And again, I've told you how to do it. The important things to know, make sure you are within 30 degrees of the midline. Don't spread them so far out apart. The reason for this is that the nasal uh, field is usually limited because of the presence of nose. So rather than, you know, grossing out and uh, sort of mucking up the whole test for the lack of a better word, it's easier just to test within the central 30 degrees. And remember, most of glaucoma defects are within 10 to 20 degrees. And this uh, confrontation visual field testing can pick up those gross defects, awkward scotomas, if you're doing it properly. If you have a retinal detachment, most retinal detachment eventually go, do, go, go on and develop central 30 degrees defects, as do vascular occlusions. It's only a neurological visual field that starts damaging the periphery maybe. And neurological visual fields are again something that a neurologist would be interested in. Us ophthalmologists are interested in what we do and these central 30 degrees are usually enough for us. So this is just again the template that we used before for the right and the left and we are noting okay. Uh, the other thing is make sure your fingers are perpendicular, not like this. If you're like this and your fingers are in line or parallel to the patient, he will not be able to say, hey, you you're not doing this, you're doing this, so hold them perpendicular. And remember the, the patient's responses. All responses have to be correct for a quadrant in order to be labeled as okay, and I've told you that uh, before. So how do you record abnormal finding? Just put an X here. So I've put X here, and this is an exercise for you. Can you detect which type of uh, defects we are looking at um, um, when you see this uh, abnormal finding? So how do you record abnormal findings? Simply you put an X instead of OK, and this is just a test for you to see if you can recognize what sort of a visual field defects I'm looking at. So I'm just going to give you some hints as to where these defects are being picked up from, and let's see if you can find out what defects you're looking at. Uh, thank you very much. The video, uh, the clinical demonstration video will now follow. If you have any questions, again, please do post them in the WhatsApp group, and we'll see you next time. Assalamualaikum. मेरा नाम डॉक्टर अली है आज मैंने आपकी नजर के हुजूम का मुआयना करना है मुआयने के दौरान आपको कोई दर्द या तकलीफ नहीं होगी अगर आपको कोई दर्द या तकलीफ हो तो आप मुझे बताएं कि आपकी इजाजत है 
ठीक है तो फर्स्ट थिंग टू डू इज टू मेक श्योर यू एंड योर पेशेंट आर एट एन आई लेवल सो हिज और हर आईज आर डायरेक्टली इन लाइन विद योर आईज एंड द सेकंड थिंग टू डू इज टू बी एट अ कंफर्टेबल सिटिंग डिस्टेंस व्हिच इज अबाउट अ मीटर सो फ्रॉम द शोल्डर अ लिटिल बिट बैकवर्ड्स इज अबाउट अ मीटर अब आपने करना यह है कि अपनी बाई आंख की हथेली से अपनी बाई आंख को बंद करना so you close your corresponding eye so that the eyes that are open are directly facing one another so because we start testing with the right eye you make the patient close the left eye you close your right eye so your left eye and the patient's right eye are open one very important thing with this assessment is that your visual field should be normal if they are not normal or subnormal then the results won't be accurate further the t- this test should ideally be done without spectacles because spectacles do change the visual field um आपने मेरी आंख में देखते रहे मैं आपको उंगलियां दिखाऊंगा आपने मुझे ये सिर्फ बताना है कि ये कितनी उंगली है नजर नहीं है ना नहीं हाथ की तरफ नहीं देखना मेरी आंख के अंदर देखते रहे सो मिड वे बिटवीन योर सेल्फ एंड द पेशेंट अबाउट 30 डिग्रीज फ्रॉम द मिड लाइन होल्ड अप आई दन टू और फाइव फिंगर्स पर पेंडिकुलर टू द पेशेंट एंड आस्क हिम और कर टू काउंट ये कितनी उंगली है Similarly, now test in the nasal quadrant. This was a temporal quadrant towards the outside. Now we are checking the nasal quadrant. Very dark. Me, see. Again, 30 degrees from the midline. Make sure that you are within 30 degrees because the nasal visual field is smaller because of the presence of the the lateral wall of the nose. Me, see. 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 ठीक है मेरी आंख में देखते रहेगा नाव यू टू चेक सुपीरियर एंड इंफीरियर क्वार्रेंट्स अगेन इट हैज टू बी विद इन थर्टी डिग्रीज ऑफ सुपीरियर और इंफीरियर मिड लाइन सो बताइए कितनी मिली है दो एक पाँच एक पाँच दो मेरी आंख में देखती रहे एक दो पाँच एक पाँच एक ठीक है Now we're going to test the other eye. अब आप अपनी दाई आंख को अपने दाई हाथ की बाई आंख को बाई हाथ की हथेली से बंद करने अगेन मेक श्योर दैट दॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग आईज आर ओपन सो एज द पेशेंट हैज क्लोज हिज और लेफ्ट आई यू क्लोज योर राइट आई सो दैट दी आर कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग आईज आई आईज दैट आर इन स्ट्रेट लाइन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू वन इन दर आउट सर सीधा रखिएगा मेरी आंख के अंदर देखते रहना है आंख को नहीं हिलाइएगा मैं आपको दोबारा से अपनी हाथ की उंगलियां गिराऊंगा हाथ की तरफ नहीं देखना बताइएगा कितनी उंगलियां Again, 30 degrees from the midline. Checking the temporal quadrant first. How many are there? 5, 1, 2, 1, 5, 2. Okay. Checking the nasal quadrant. Again, make sure this is a smaller five, quadrant. 5, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1